Hello class, today I'm going to present to you the third part of our Basics of Electricity mini-series. In the first part, we discussed about the basic concepts such as potential difference, current, charge, etc. In the second part, we moved on to resistance, heating effects of electric current and circuit diagrams. In this mm, part, we are going to take another step further. But before I move on to that, I would first like to talk about the assessment I was about to um, present to you. Um, I've decided to create another video solving examples of the formulas we have learned. And in the description of that video, I will um, make the assessment available so you can access it. I'm sorry I couldn't make a video yesterday and that was because I just couldn't find time. I, I just went busy. Okay, now let's move on to the actual electricity series. In this video, we're going to talk about um, the different arrangements of circuits, which are parallel circuits and series circuits, and the devices we, which we use to measure the potential difference and current through a conductor. Let's move on to series combinations. There are two types of combinations in which resistors can be placed. The first one is a series combination. So this is what a series combination looks like. Okay, in this combination, resistors are placed basically in a series to each other. Okay, so the current that flows through both of these resistors is the same. So the current that flows through the conductors doesn't change in a series combination. But the potential difference across two ends of both um, conductors are different. The voltage each conductor gets is different. Okay, in this um, type of circuit, the resistor with the greater resistance gets a greater voltage, while the resistor with the lower resistance gets the lower voltage. So that's how ba basically a series uh, combination works. Now, what is the formula for calculating resistance in a series combination? So the total resistance in a series combination is the sum of all the resistors, I mean the resistances of all the resistors in a series combination. Now let's move on to parallel combinations. So in a parallel combination, the resistors are connected parallel to each other in their own separate branches, okay? Um, the distribution of current and potential difference works differently here. It's the other way around to, uh, as compared to series, combina series combinations. Um, the resistor with the greatest resistance gets the least current and vice versa. Keep that in mind. While the potential difference across two ends of all the branches remains the same. Do you get it? So um, let me repeat that. The current through all the three branches is different. Oh, not all the three branches, as many branches as you want. It's different depending on resistance. You can use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance, okay? While the potential difference across the three, um, not the three, as many uh, branches remains the same. That's pretty simple, and it works the other way around in series combinations. This has been proven experimentally. Um, it hasn't been proven mathematically, but experimentally. This, um, the what is the formula for calculating resistance in a parallel combination? I'm sorry for uh, writing series there, it's supposed to be parallel. Um, the formula is 1 upon total resistance equals 1 upon the first resistance plus 1 upon the second resistance plus 1 upon the third resistance and it keeps on going until, the total, uh, until you get the um, total resistance, until all the resistors are covered, okay? So, and that is the formula for calculating the resistance in a parallel combination. And the answer you get, you just have to flip it all the way around. I mean, not all the way around. Uh, you have to flip it around to get the total resistance. Now, let's move on to some common measuring devices for um, voltage and current. Just remember, for now, we are going to use only two measuring devices, okay, which are an which are ammeters and voltmeters. The ammeters are the devices which we use to measure the current, okay? And they are placed in a circuit in this way, in series, okay? They're like in the diagram I've shown you. Remember the symbol of ammeter from uh, our previous video? Yeah, you just use that symbol and place it in our, our circuit diagram, okay? An ammeter is used to measure electric current, as I told you, 
and it is always connected in series with the resistors you want to measure the current through and an ideal ammeter has zero resistance. Now let me tell you why it has zero resistance. So we know that in a series combination the current doesn't really change. So why does it have to have zero resistance? Well, it does indirectly change, not directly. The current flowing through both the resistors is equal, right? But if the resistance of the total um, of the circuit increases, then the current flowing through each um, resistor is going to decrease. You can get that from Ohm's law, which states that current and resistance are inversely proportional to each other. Do you remember that part? Okay, um, or I can rather say current and potential difference are directly proportional to each other. And uh, if the resistor, uh, resistance increases, then the potential difference is going to split, right? And because of that, if you calculate with calculate this using um, Ohm's law, you're going to figure out that the current is going to be different and you're not going to get the same current as you were supposed to get and your readings are going to be disturbed. Now let's move on to voltmeters. What is a voltmeter? A voltmeter, as you can get from the name, is used to measure the voltage or potential difference across two ends of a conductor. That's pretty much it. Okay. A voltmeter is always connected in parallel. Why? Do you remember that uh, potential difference remains the same across uh, parallel branches? So it is going to be easier for voltmeter to measure uh, potential difference in parallel. And at the same time, if you put it in series, it's just not going to measure um, potential difference across two ends of a conductor because it's not connected to both ends of, of a conductor. Do you get it? Okay, now an ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance. And do you know why? Let me tell you. Well, we do know that um, the potential difference across all the branches of a parallel combination remains the same, right? But we do, uh, we also know that the potential difference splits in series. What happens is, let's say uh, we have another resistor. And if the, resist if the resistance of the um, overall circuit changes just because of the voltmeter then the splitting of the um, splitting of the potential difference is also going to change have you thought of that so if the um, p potential difference i mean if the resistance of the voltmeter is low then the uh, potential i mean then the current flowing through each branch is going to be um, different obviously and let's say and uh, the first resistor is going to get the greater potential difference and the second end, I mean the second resistor is going to get the um, lower resistance. But if the um, resistance of the voltmeter is incredibly high, then the resistance of the overall parallel combination is not going to change by much. It is going to change a bit. And that would be because um, some current is going to flow through the voltmeter. We want no current to flow through the voltmeter, so the overall resistance of the parallel combination remains the same. Uh, or the current that flows through the um, resistor um, remains the same. Um, so we can have the right potential difference readings. And that is basically why the m voltmeter needs to be connected in parallel with the resistor. And this is how a voltmeter works. It's used to measure potential difference, number one. Number two, it's connected in parallel at all times. And number two, and number three, an ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance. Okay? Now, let's move on to what we are going to do in the next part of the series. So, in the next part of the series, I'm going to solve a few examples regarding the formulas we learned earlier in our first part and the second part. And I'm also going to have an assessment ready for you in the description. You can download this assessment, you can finish it, and you can send me the answers or you can send me um, the full assessment. Um, and I can mark it and send it back to you, giving you your marks. And uh, that is how my channel is going to work. Thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more videos. 
And since I'm new to teaching, um, I know I'm not really good at it. So please leave your suggestions in the description down below, okay? Um, please drop a like if you really enjoyed this video or learned something new from it. Share this video with your friends and family. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.